city of Calgary. I think being a paramedic is kind of like being a parent. I mean, it's the hardest and most rewarding job in the world. Um, nothing ever could have fully prepared me to comprehend the wear and tear that this job would have on my mind and my body. I am 31 years old and I've had more injuries on the job than I can count. Uh, many go unreported due to a reporting system that's seemingly difficult, as well as there's this culture that exists within EMS where we don't like to show any signs of weakness or vulnerability. I have chronic pain in my neck, hips, knees, back, shoulders, wrists, and you know, I've found that this pain for me is best managed through things like yoga, meditation, rest, of course, laughter. You know, in the last two years alone, I have had two hip surgeries, and I'm getting prepared for pretty extensive wrist surgery in just a matter of days. Despite all my health concerns, I'm not ready to be done being a paramedic. I love serving the community, and I love my job. Uh, you know, when I have time to care for myself, then I find it to be an honor and a privilege to come and care for you in your time of need. But it's times that I don't have time to take care of myself, you know, uh, things start adding up like sleep deprivation that I'll find, you know, I'm angry and irritable and distracted and, you know, it's in those times that I've even found myself mentally flipping through that brochure of suicide and wondering, is this the only option? Because there's times where it truly, it does, it feels that desperate. Emergency medical services as a profession is quite young. Uh, with no shortage of growing pains and issues that we need to work out. Uh, each one of those issues, though, is an opportunity, I believe, when addressed to drastically improve the lives of paramedics, paramedics' families, and ultimately you, the communities we serve. The best way to describe our shift schedules is complete insanity. Uh, we work two 12-hour day shifts, and then we do a complete 180, and the next day we work two 12-hour night shifts. All of those shifts have the potential to become, you know, 13, 14, 15-hour shifts when uh, we get a late call, which is fairly regularly. In addition, something a lot of people don't know is that during those long shifts, paramedics get no sanctioned breaks. There's no break, there's no lunch, there's no nothing. No breaks wouldn't fly with any other profession. So why do we allow it to happen to our paramedics? The only thing that I can really think is just that people don't know. Um, so that's where I come in. I'm trying to create this awareness and let you know that your paramedics were fatigued, were exhausted, were tired. Uh, there's, there's, of course, there's a few amazing people that just, you know, they love the pace and they love love it the way it is, but there is a lot of people really hurting. The grueling schedule, uh, it doesn't just affect, you know, myself. It affects my daughter. I'm a single mom. It affects the family that I rely on to care for her while I'm working. Uh, you know, this schedule is so immersive and so full on that most people couldn't ever fathom the intensity unless you worked in emergency services. And you shouldn't have to, because you know this level in, of intensity that we've been going at for years is just, it's not right. I believe that these historic and outdated you know, shift patterns and shift schedules, you know, maybe it used to work, but it's not working anymore. I believe that these are leading factors in EMS fatigue and burnout. You know, many people are not aware that they lose great paramedics, these fantastic caregivers uh, that are full of compassion, that are smart, they're the type of people that I would want to come show up for my family. Uh, we're losing these practitioners because they want to have families or they, you know, they're aging or they just can't keep up with the pace. And we have this mentality where we kind of, you know, we just hire new people and wear them out and spit them back out and then get some new ones. And fantastic practitioners are not lasting their full career and it's heartbreaking. I'll spend an entire day prepping food just for my shifts because, you know, during those four days on, our tour on, uh, it feels like nothing else can exist. It's so 
It's so full on that it feels like survival. That's why I have to make all this food ahead of time. I've just got to survive these days. <laughs> That's what it feels like. As I prepare for surgery again in just a matter of days, I find myself full of apprehension and starting to question like how can I go back to the madness that is my work environment and manage issues like low staff morale and long busy days and taking care of my patients and still managing my own pain and managing to stay healthy myself mentally and physically. Um, how can I come through for someone on the worst day of their lives in such a big way? Because that's important to me and I realize that the best way that I can do that is to come through for myself first. In addition to being a mother and a paramedic, I'm also an artist and a visionary and I love pushing the boundaries of what is for the possibility of what could be. So, you know, I believe that Artists have this special role in social change and that is to create an awareness and to you know foster conversation and that's what I'm gonna plan to do here I you know I may not know how to start changes in legislation I may not know how to change policies or create regulations around things like um, population to ambulance ratio because I believe that's something that should exist uh, but I do know how to paint. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to paint a lot and I'm going to ask for your help. Starting November 1st, I will be painting 100 paramedic portraits over 100 days. Oh, that's a lot. That's like three months of my life. I am committing to this project. And uh, each day I'm going to ask you to like, to share, to comment, to start a conversation, to do whatever we have to, to get this message in the hands of the right people. I know there's people out there that can help me with this process because I, you know, I just don't know what to do. Um, but we're at a point in EMS where, you know, we need to evolve and maybe there's people outside of just EMS that, that need to get involved to help us with that process. I'm asking you, the community, to stand with me as I ask for change and for choice in my profession. The choice to have a family and still work the job I love, the choice to um, maintain a healthy body and still serve you, the people I love, the choice to reduce rates of addiction, abuse, anxiety, depression, and of course, suicide amongst first responders. I've created this video and this project not only as a cry for help, but as a, a call to action. I am calling you, I'm calling the community, I am calling other EMS workers and first responders, I am calling my employer and the government. Uh, you know, maybe you didn't know there was a problem before, but now you do. So what are we going to do about it together? Together I believe that we can find solutions like shorter shift options or different shift patterns, scheduled breaks, more ambulances, you know, a variety of things that could make paramedics physical and mental health a priority. People always say when you need help, ask for help. So that's what I'm doing. I am asking for your help. You call me, you call 911 when you need help. Well, that's not the type of help I need. So I'm creating this call for, for help. So follow me, Naomi Fox, however you like to stay connected. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and starting November 1st, I will be posting a short video every day of the portrait I'm painting. And you can watch and you know stay connected and watch the creation process, which is always exciting. And yeah, I'm excited for the next three months. I'm excited for this project. Thank you for your time, for your understanding, for your love and your support. I appreciate it. We all do. Thank you.